Supernetting um, is the opposite or the reverse of subnetting. And supernetting is also known as aggregation because it will allow you to combine um, you know, several networks to accommodate a larger range of hosts. So if you think of subnetting as robbing Peter to pay Paul, in other words, um, you're taking bits you know, normally used for the host portion and giving it to the network portion to make subnets, um, then you can think of supernetting as robbing Paul to pay Peter. And that is, um, you would be taking bits from the network portion and giving it to the host portion so that you could accommodate or have more hosts per network. Um, and there are a myriad of reasons for doing this, um, but basically it's still getting into classless interdomain routing or CIDR notation. Um, so if we were using supernetting, for example, we could combine several, you know, smaller class C networks together to approximate a number of hosts required for a single class B network. Um, and this might help us, you know, waste less IP addresses. Let's say that we needed a network with approximately 2,000 hosts, okay? Well, a class B network by default gives us way more than we need. You know, that's 65,000 approximately minus the 2,000. We'd be wasting 63,000 IP addresses. So what if instead of using a, you know, class B address, what if we supernetted some class C networks? In other words, we just kind of combined them together to get our, you know, 200 hosts. Now at 254 hosts per class C network, if we were to combine about eight of those, we would be able to accommodate 2,000 hosts, but without wasting 63,000 IP addresses if we were to simply use a class B address. So again, we would apply our formula, 2 to the power of x minus 2. So 2 to the power of 11 minus 2 would be this, you know, would give us 2,048 minus the 2, 2,046 hosts if we were to do that. Um, and how would we do that? Um, we're taking three bits from the network side and giving them to the eight bits on the host side. And that would give us a total of 11 bits. Um, so, you know, we're just aggregating or combining like the last octet, the last byte table with three bits from the third octet, or the third byte table. Um, now, a supernetted class C looks like a subnetted class B, um, you know, just like a, you know, sometimes a, a, a subnetted class A can look like a normal class C. So, you know, the subnet mask is not always what it appears to be at first glance. You have to kind of look at your block values and look at the su subnet and hosts and apply your formula sometimes to see what's going on. So for a normal class C address, that would be CIDR24. But we're going to supernet, so we want to steal bits from the network side and give them to the host side. And how would we do that? Well, um, here's a class C address, 220, 78, 168. So normally these three bytes or octets would be the network portion. And this whole remaining last byte or octet would be used for, you know, for hosts. Um, however, what we're doing here is we're actually, you know, it's the opposite of subnetting. We're subtracting from the network side now, not the host side. So I still have the remaining eight bits here, but now I've provided an additional three bits over here um, that can be used for hosts, all right? And then the rest of that would be the network. Again, let's take a look at this um, in a byte table. If we were to supernet this class C address, normally the CIDR would be 24. But since we're borrowing three bits from the network part to increase the host, it's, we're going to make it CIDR21. And that's going to change the subnet mask. Normally it would be 255.255.255.0. Now it's going to be 255.255. And in this case, we would add all the bits up. So if we're going to, on the third octet, if we're going to supernet on these three bits, our subnet mask would be 248. Okay, and it looks like a subnetted class B, but in this case, it's a supernetted class C. And we can tell that, again, by the first octet. And this would have the effect of aggregating or combining about eight class C networks. If you think about it, each class C network gets about 254 hosts each. So if we plug this into our formula, 2 to the power of x minus 2, 2 to the power of um, 11 minus 2, 8 in the last octet plus 3 in the third octet is 11. It gives us 2,046 uh, possible hosts per subnet. Um, and in this case, we're not really using anything for subnetting. We're using 11 bits for the hosts. 
to the CIDR21, and that would have the effect of giving us a Class C network that instead of 254 could accommodate 2,046 hosts. And again, that would be combining all of these Class C networks, these consecutive Class C networks together, or supernetting them together.